Hi, everyone, and welcome. Thanks for joining the session today. Um, my name is New, and I'm going to be talking about expanding your reach with social marketing with your fundraising event. Um, so my name is New T, and if you just see my face for the first time, um, I'm the content manager at Give Sign Up, Brian Sign Up, uh, and I'm no stranger to the nonprofit community. If my face looks familiar or my name looks familiar, I was previously the editor at Nonprofit Pro, um, but I'm very happy to be joining the Give Sign Up team and then talking to you today about social marketing. So here's a quick little uh, overview of what we're going to be discussing today. Um, you know, the first thing you vote a great event, uh, but next is, you know, engaging your supporters, getting uh, your event out there and promoting it. And we're going to talk about how social media is so important. And, um, and then we're going to talk about how you can scale your current social media platforms and getting the most out of your existing networks. We're going to then move on to incentivizing your supporters um, with rewards and social sharing. And then if we have a few minutes at the end, we'll save time for questions. But um, it, if at any time during now, the end of the, ses the session that you have a question, just type it and we'll get to it um, as soon as we can. So you built a great fundraising event and that's great, um, but now it's really time to build your supporter engagement, um, build your brand awareness and get people signed up for your wonderful event. So I think we all know the power of social media. Everyone uses it from, you know, Gen Z to millennials to Gen X, baby boomers matures. I know I am a frequent social media user. My parents use it often and even my pop-up and my grandma. So, um, you know, you can reach a wide range of audiences with social media. And here I have a couple of stats from the Peer Research Center and the Global State of Digital in 2021 from Hootsuite. You know, you can really see how expansive the growth has been since 2005. Um, social media usage in adults has grown from 5% 16 years ago to now 72% in 2021. And even though we're in a very technologically advanced stage, there's still millions of people joining social media a year. In 2020, 490 million new social media users signed up for accounts, which is pretty impressive. Um, so there's definitely still a lot of opportunity to reach a lot of people on social channel channels. So on average, we're spending two hours and 25 minutes a day in social media. So we're always on it and it's easy to access since almost all of us have a, a smartphone or a mobile device. Um, we, we have an average of 8.4 social media accounts, which is kind of a lot. Um, and I think this last stat here is really important for you as nonprofits because 44.8 of internet users perform brand research through social media. So this is why it's so important to have a pretty developed social media strategy. So when people are looking for more information about your fundraising event or your nonprofit itself, you know, they can recognize you on social media and see that you have, you're active and you're engaging your supporters, which is really important to them. Um, so next we're going to talk about how to scale your event with social marketing and getting the most out of your existing networks. So here I have, um, you know, TechCo has a wonderful infographic about social media. And this is a quick snapshot of the popular, the most used social media platforms. And this by no means is me telling you that you should be signing up for each one of these social platforms. That's just not conducive, um, but it does show you where people are engaging in. Um, so my next two slides, you kind of get a deeper dive into each of these uh, social channels. So you can really see how engaged people are in uh, social media. I mean, if you look at the TikTok one, and I know TikTok is the, one of the newer social platforms, but people are spending on average 52 minutes um, on the app. And this app is made of 15, 30 second videos, maybe a minute, I think up to three minutes, um, but people are still spending nearly an hour on it. Um, and here you can see some more stats about Reddit, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Snapchat. So, you know, you can see that people are using social media widely. So this is why it's so important to leverage it, um, to get more exposure for your brand, for your event, and get more supporters in the door. Um, 
But social media is not a set it and forget it method. Um, you can't just sign up for an account, post once a month and think that you're gonna grow your supporters. That's just not how it works. You gotta really think about it on a strategic lens and build out a strategy that will help supplement it. Um, so first is identifying your top performing channels. Um, I think at this point, everyone should have a social media channel or two. Um, if you don't, you know, you can do Google is free and you can do the research to see who your audience is and like which channels are engaging in. And you can kind of see this with these social media platforms they are free to sign up, obviously. Um, but each of them have a built in analytic system. All you have to do is enable it. It can get you can figure out what your engagement levels are in each channel and um, how often people are clicking, clicking on your posts. And then going going hand in hand with that, just understanding who you're marketing to, just really looking at your own data and seeing who your supporters are, how they're engaging with your nonprofit, what their preferences are, what their um, interests are, and how they prefer to communicate. And of course, social media is not a long form communication channel. You really got to keep push, post short and to the point because there's hundreds, if not thousands of updates on people's news feeds. Because you, So you really only have a few seconds to keep their interest before they move on to the next thing. And of course, use eye-catching images with so much copy just like that's on the screen. Just having images that will that really promote your mission and promote your brand really um, really will gauge their attention. And of course, engage with your followers. If they're excited about your event and they're asking questions or liking, make sure you're answering them in a timely manner so they know that you're, they're actually interacting with a real person and not just like a robot. And of course, um, putting pride aside, if, you, if there are organizations um, that are hosting similar events or doing kind of like similar things as you are, learn from them, see what's working for them and see if it's applicable to your organization as well. All right, so Give Sign Up has, um, within the platform, it has a social sharing option. Um, so this really, with this, you can, you know, put it in the description of your fundraising event, and then also add images. You can see here we use Scott Coffee Run. And this is just like a great way to control what participants are sharing. And, you know, you really control your brand and your messaging. Um, so when a supporter signs up for your event, a little pop-up will come up, be like, thanks for registering, share this with their friends uh, and family. Uh, so this is just an excellent resources to put on. And if you don't see your images being shared on Facebook, you can go to the Facebook debugger and enter your donation forms URLs. Um, so this should automatically update the social share settings that you just added. The other resource that Give Sign Up has that is um, amazing is the Facebook fundraiser integration. Um, you know, this just really streamlines the integration process. And you know, if you don't set this up, you're missing out on a lot of donations, as Steve said in his last presentation. And our integration makes things really, really simple. So instead of waiting several days for your Facebook funders to get approved, you can now get same day approval. You just have to make sure you're enabling a few things. Um, you're enabling fundraising for your Give Sign Up event. Uh, you have a Facebook page approved for Facebook payments, and then you submit your event for approval. So it could be someone's at the front door. <laughs> it could be um, one to two minutes to really set that up. And there's a link here if you want to go to it, and it's kind of like a breakdown of how to set up your Facebook fundraiser integration on Give Sign Up. Um, Facebook groups. I love Facebook groups. This is just, this resource is just a great way to engage with like-minded people um, who are interested in the same things you are. So these are, this, these groups are really ideal for organizations with loyal followings or very large events or organizations with many events that are held throughout the year. Um, it's also good for challenge events um, so that participants can like share training tips or accomplishments. Um, I know from personal experience that, you know, people who are doing physical activities, they like to show their results. Um, and this is a great way to do it. Some pros of Facebook groups is that they create ambassadors or influencers for your event or organization. It gets people excited to talk about your event, your mission, and why it's important to them. And of course, it 
improves the event experience for everyone, making it uh, more of a community and, um, and it builds relationships with other supporters. Of course, some cons are, you know, Facebook groups are time consuming to manage because you really got to be on top of it. You have to be active and um, really engage with the people that are in it and who are sharing and posting. And of course, it requires an engaged following to work. So if, um, you know, nonprofits themselves are already strapped with time and resources. So these are just some considerations to keep in mind if you're thinking about creating a Facebook group for your event. All right, um, here comes the fun stuff. Um, here we're going to talk about incentivizing your supporters with rewards. Um, we have an awesome referrals rewards program that is really unique um, for nonprofits. Um, just as a quick snapshot here, in 2020 alone, Give Sign Up had 436,000 referral codes. We, there was $12.1 million in ticket sales and 17% of the transaction came from referrals, which is pretty huge. Um, and I love, love this graphic because it makes understanding the referral program just like pretty simple. Um, I'm sure you've seen this within the for-profit sector. I know for me, if you, when I have um, a few <laughs> wine subscriptions and, you know, there's always pop up that says like, hey, if you, Refer five friends, you get a hundred dollars after box. It's kind of the same same thought process here. So it's five steps. A supporter signs up for your event, and then you, they get a unique code that they share out to their networks, and then their friends and family sign up with the code. Supporter gets some money, and then thus growing your event. Um, so the refer rewards are really easy to set up. I think it only it really only takes a minute, maybe two. Um, just from your event dashboard, you search for the referral and navigate to the referral tracking setup. Um, we have a nice graphic here as an example for dogs, dogs for the run 5K. Um, so then you can enable referral settings and set up rewards when supporters reach a certain threshold. For example, if ticket holders refer five additional purchases, they'll automatically receive $20, uh, $20 refund to their card from the event. And then you're all set. Uh, this slide is really cool because it, you know, it's not, referral rewards aren't set and forget it. You really got to take the time to build up your referral program. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but, you know, take the time to design your program and decide what's best. Um, make sure you tell people about it. People aren't going to know that this is even an option if you don't share with them. And so take advantage of social media here. Keep it simple and straight to the point. Make it really fun and um, constantly remind them that this is a way to um, get, get rewards for being a, a super supporter for your organization. Um, all right. So team fundraisers. Uh, I know Steve talked a, a lot about this. So I'm just going to briefly touch on it. So team fundraisers are, are really fun. People want to do things that, uh, people are more inclined to do things when um, they're doing it with a lot of people. And, you know, our data shows us that 30% of participants join teams when they're available. Um, and teams can be social, they can be competitive, or they can be straight fundraising. So obviously social is, you know, 100% for fun. Um, competitive is, it allows teams to compete against each other for team scoring, which can make things, um, that's where kind of gamification comes to hit, into play. And, you know, a little friendly competition never hurts and makes things really, really exciting. And of course, fundraising is just purely fundraising and raising money. All right, so um, separate from fundraisers, we have teams and groups as well, as you said, and you can incentivize them by automating discounts and refunds for anyone in the team that hits a certain size. Um, this, satisfies, this satisfies a discount demand while incentivizing price sensitive participants to recruit family and friends. So as an example, a registration could be $39, um, but with a $5 discount for members of groups that are more than five. So how it works is the first four registrants pay the full, the base price of $39. And then once the fifth uh, registrant comes in the door, that person, along with everyone after, pays $34, and then the first four refunded $5. So it's super simple, um, and it encourages them to create bigger groups and teams. 
And so that's all I have for you today. Um, I don't know if there's any questions. I'm happy to answer them now. Um, if not, you know, my contact information is right there. So you can shoot me a line anytime. Yeah, we don't have any questions, um, but we have a few extra minutes. So if anyone wants to leave one during the break, um, somebody will grab it. So thanks, Neil. Thank we'll you. be back in um, 15 minutes for Whitney's presentation at 3.30 on managing volunteers for your fundraising event. So we'll see you then.